Hey guys, what's up? This is Recreational420 and today we're going to talk about five reasons why cannabis is just like wine. Reason number one, varieties. With over 10,000 great or with over 10, there are over 10,000 great varieties worldwide. Cannabis similarly boasts thousands of strains um, and those are just the ones we know of because this is still an underground, um, considered an underground market or industry more or less there's still probably thousands and thousands and thousands of strains that we don't even know about that haven't made it all the way to the commercial sector yet. Um, so that's reason number one. Uh, reason number two is going to be the way, um, is going to be based around the way that wine is broken down into categories, right? So in wine, you have your red wine, your white wine, your fortifieds, and your champagnes. Um, similarly with uh, cannabis, you have your indica sativas, your edibles and your concentrates um, <laughs> and the way they're broken down is like this sativas are like white wines with more of a bubbly upbeat effect um, red wines are more like or indicas are more like red wines which are recommended for sleep and relaxation at the end of the day um, fortifieds which are just wines that have an a, a stronger alcohol content al liquor added to them like a brandy or a cognac or what have you. Um, the only reason they do that is to provide the user with a stronger uh, intoxicating effect from the same product, right? So that's the exact same thing as when you take and you blast your cannabis and you make your wax or shatters, what have you. The only reason you're doing that is to provide your end client with a higher intoxicating effect from your product. Make sense? Um, Edibles can be included in this also because there's plenty of candies that have uh, wine in them. And then also if you Google like cooking with wine, you're going to find thousands of recipes because people just associate wine with food. Um, and similarly, like, and that's why I feel like you can kind of uh, mesh the two together. Reason number three is going to be growing method. Um, and that means like the growing method affects the final product. So you can have a uh, farmer A or vineyard A and vineyard B both growing the same exact varieties. But if vineyard A uses fertilizer A and B and vineyard B uses fertilizer C and D, then those two uh, vineyards are going to have different tasting bottles of wine, even if the variety is the exact same in the grape. Makes sense? Similarly with cannabis, you have... Um, you can have a strain being grown by one farmer and a strain that same exact strain being grown by another farmer. But if they're using different techniques and different um, ratios of like fertilizers and what have you, then those two things are going to be completely different. Um, and with cannabis, it's a little more finicky because those two things can change so much that you can have the same product from the exact same grower come out completely different. Um, if one thing changes along that process. And even if it doesn't, things happen on accident. I'll explain that later in other videos. But right now I'm just comparing wine to eat. Uh, reason number four is going to be the way the businesses are structured themselves, right? So either you can, um, with wine or with vineyards, you can have a giant, giant vineyard where you're gonna be producing like thousands and thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of bottles of wine. Or you can choose to be a smaller boutique um, vineyard who's going to focus on the more like finicky varieties of uh, grapes and you're going to produce specialty, like more specialty wines. The exact same thing applies to cannabis. When you get your license, you can either apply for the giant tier three that gives you this giant canopy and basically allows you to produce as much as you can churn out. Or you can... Um, apply to be a smaller farm and focus on the more finicky varieties, the more exotics. And um, and in all honesty, if you look at wine, the, the, the boutiques are the ones that like kind of run the industry because they're the ones that take the time to find the new varieties, to get the new flavors, to get these new methods. It's the same thing with wine or with weed. When you're talking cannabis, the, the, the boutique growers are the ones coming up with new tech, the ones coming up with new strains, the ones developing and taking the time to develop their own in-house strains. Now, like, once you have an in-house strain, you can build your entire brand around that. But if the industry isn't, um, if the laws don't allow the industry to operate that way, then that's not going to happen. And currently, they're just not. Um, but that, like, the way those businesses are structured, they're still really, really similar. Um, 
in the sense that you can choose to be a giant producer or a small scale like operation. Reason number five is price. Just the same, the same way that you can walk into any major retailer and get a five to set to ten dollar bottle of wine, you can go in and into any retailer and get a five to ten dollar gram of bud. Um, or you can walk into a higher end boutique or like a really nice restaurant and order yourself a thousand dollar bottle all day. You can also go into the boutique section of your retailer and get a thirty dollar gram of bud all the same. Um, and that's why they're similar like cannabis cannabis might not be allowed to be sold in the same form and that's why i think like we haven't seen thousand dollar ounces yet um and these are just five of the reasons like i can sit here and i'm sure i can think of more there's thousands and thousands and thousands of similarities between the two industries because this is just a plant that grows different ways and goes different varieties gives you different effects and, and they both do the exact same, like, they're both intended to intoxicate, right? The only difference is one's looked at as shame and one's looked at as, no, that's acceptable. We, with that, my hope is that, like, it, with time, this industry is allowed to flourish and turn into, like, the beautiful thing that it can be and that people are allowed to make the money that they can off of this thing. So, anyway, this is Recreational 420, and I really hope that you guys uh, got to see some of the similarities because that's really, at the end of the day, that's all I'm doing here. I don't, I don't care. Um, I don't have a dog in the fight when it comes to like who I'm reviewing or anything. All I want to do is provide basic information for somebody who's slightly curious and wants to learn a little bit before they walk into a dispensary. That's it. Um, and I hope you guys can enjoy that. And if you like it, give this a thumbs up. And if you hate it, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Either way, give me some love.